This is the last part about the electrochemical series and using standard electrode potentials. I'm delighted you're still here and uh, we've reached our final objective which is using standard electrode potentials to identify the reaction for which uh, E cell is positive and the reason why we wanted to do this is because uh, the reaction for which E cell is positive is the one which would proceed. We could describe it as the spontaneous or feasible reaction or related to delta G uh, changing Gibbs energy uh, by saying that if ECL cell is positive then delta G for that reaction is negative. Identifying the reaction for which E cell is positive sometimes called the anti-clockwise rule. So to do this we need to apply this rule. The more positive electrode goes in the forward direction this is reduction and goes on the right. So for example with nickel and copper Copper here has got a more positive electrode potential than nickel does. Uh, I've written them out here, so we would say that the copper would go in the forward direction and therefore the nickel goes in the reverse direction. This is redox, so one will be reduction, the other will be oxidation. To work out this e cell EMF, we can just say it's right hand side minus left hand side, and the copper is the more positive, it went in the forward direction, it was a reduction and it was on the right of the cell, so it's the right hand side. So we take the plus 0.34 then minus the nickel, that's a double minus, makes plus 0.25, gives plus 0.59. And overall this positive value indicates that the feasible reaction is the copper 2 plus becoming copper and then the nickel going in the reverse direction, nickel becoming nickel 2 plus. Now this is sometimes called the anti-clockwise rule because if we link up the direction of the arrows then they go in an anti-clockwise direction. However this relies on the electrode potentials being put in this order with the most negative at the top which is often the case but not always the case which is why uh, I prefer to just look for the more positive value and that will proceed in the forward direction. And what we've predicted here is is this, that if we were to measure this uh, nickel-copper cell and put the nickel on the left-hand side, the copper on the right-hand side, then we would record a voltage of plus 1.10 volts. And a last example involving chlorine and bromine. And from the standard electrode potentials, we can see that the plus 1.38 is greater than the plus 1.09. And so the chlorine will go in the forward direction. Um, the cell EMF is the chlorine cell EMF, the 1.38 minus the bromine uh, standard electrode potential because the chlorine is proceeding in the forward direction and the bromine is going in the reverse direction. Finally, we can rewrite these half equations uh, with the uh, chlorine in the forward direction, the bromine reversed, and uh, then conclude that the spontaneous reaction would be chlorine with bromide becoming chloride and bromine. And this is the reaction we see uh, in terms of displacement reactions of halogens. So to summarize what we've learned about the electrochemical series, um, a standard electrode potential which is a negative indicates a half cell which would tend to lose electrons relative to hydrogen and if it's positive it would tend to gain electrons. Then uh, to work out this cell EMF uh, we take the standard electrode potential of the right hand electrode and then subtract the standard electrode potential of the left hand electrode. And uh, finally to work out uh, the reaction which gives a positive cell EMF look for the more positive uh, standard electrode potential. This will go in the forward direction, gains electrons and is on the right hand side of the cell diagram. If you've managed to get this far then that's fantastic and uh, that's the end of the series. I hope it's been helpful to you. If so do please tell people about these videos and if you want to contact me I'm James Mungall and I'd love to hear your comments.